So on this channel, we have a series where we look at how you can build a watch collection for a specific budget. We've been starting at $1,000 and moving our way up. Now today we're gonna to be looking at $9,000. So if you're not familiar with this format, what we do is we have a variety of different personas that just I would say are personalities, types of collectors out there as ways to showcase how you could go about building a $9,000 watch collection or any watch collection uh, using these different uh, thought processes around building one. So let's go through those different personas to begin so everybody's on the same page. And then for each of those uh, personas, we'll pick out our collection. Now for our first persona, we have the one watch collection. This is the type of person that tries their best to find the one watch that can meet all their needs and finds joy in the simplicity of reaching for the same watch every day. Persona two, the check off the boxes. This type of collector needs to have a watch for every scenario, even if one of those scenarios never happens. Persona three is the hipster. This type of collector can't stand having anything mainstream, so they spend the majority of their time picking out boutique watches and micro brands. Persona four, we have sports or nothing. This collector doesn't give a damn about your dress watches and only wants casual sporty looks and capable specs for an active lifestyle. Persona 5 is the perfect duo. This collector likes simplicity, but can never settle with just one watch. So they opt for the balance of a dress and sports everyday piece. And finally, we have Persona 6, a three watch collection. This collector likes having three perfect watches to cover all their bases. One dress, one every day, and one sports watch. So how this works is the total amount for each one of these personas needs to be around $9,000, give or take. I'm gonna to try to keep it under in pretty much all of these different offerings to stay true to that $9,000 budget, uh, but there are going to be some that might just go slightly over. Also, if you are interested in a variety of different watches that you can probably maximize your budget for if you have $9,000 to spend, I definitely recommend checking out our article looking at some of the best watches for under $10,000 in the watch industry. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. And with that, I wanna have that segue into our first category, which is that one watch collection. How can you maximize your budget for $9,000? Now, one watch that I would certainly consider is a great watch for $9,000. And I, I personally just love the look of this watch. I actually like the automatic high beat version more. I'm looking at the Grand Seiko White Birch. This watch retails just over $9,000. 40 millimeter case, 11.7 millimeter thickness, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, so wearing really true to its size, 100 meters of water resistance, so you have that to check off the boxes with, and the movement. So this is a high beat movement unveiled with this watch in 2021. There's also now a spring drive version of the White Birch, but this to me, I, I think this is my choice, which is kind of crazy to think about when you think of Grand Seiko, you think of the spring drive, uh, but this 9S A5 movement is just simply beautiful. The bridges, uh, the finishing, the layout of the movement itself is really well done probably one of the better looking uh, automatic movements that I can think of for under $10,000. That's coming from the likes of Grand Seiko, which for some might be a surprise, for others, not much of a surprise. A couple other options that I'll throw in here, uh, one would be looking more uh, into the diver category, in, but also being something that was useful enough for James Bond, so I think it could be useful enough for you, and that is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 No Time to Die Edition. I remember being at the event where this watch was unveiled in late 2019, and still to this day, I think collectors still enjoy this watch, and it's actually really been able to stand the test of time, at least over the last few years. Uh, people still get very excited about this watch. The titanium case is unique. I love the mesh bracelet. I like to actually see that available on other Omega Seamaster Diver watches because I think it's a perfect pairing with uh, the silhouette of that case, but that's one to mention. And then also something like the Breitling Navitimer as another just honorable mention in here. I think the new Navitimers, although it's kind of crazy that these are above $9,000, uh, it is pretty expensive, I think, for the Navitimer, all things considered, but still a very nice watch, and I love the new 41 millimeter options. Incredibly wearable, around 40 millimeters, I would say, in uh, how you put this one on the wrist, that's how it at least feels to me, and in a variety of different dial colors to choose from. Now, the dials that are going to be available are going to change depending on the case size, so that's a little bit of a weird thing with these new Navitimers, uh, but other watches that I would consider as well for $9,000, but there's a list of others, uh, that's why I'd recommend recommend checking out that article down below. Moving right along to Persona 2, we go from minimalized idea about collecting to trying to get as much spread as possible with your collection with the check off the boxes Persona. 
So to begin here, I wanna start with, uh, and I'm going through different categories. What are some of the categories I wanna check off? One is complications. So that's something that can uh, have a complication associated with the watch and then probably going to take up a good chunk of our budget. And for that, I have the Tudor Black Bay Pro, recently unveiled in 2022. I think the Pro is my favorite release from Tudor so far this year, along with now the new Ranger that just became available at the time of recording this video. But this watch is as somebody who loves the Explorer 2. Little probably questions from you all why I like this watch. Thickness was a big concern. I think it is thick, but uh, you do wanna try this one on before you probably write it off. If you like the look of this one, just try it on before you say, I can't make it work for myself because with that 39 millimeter case, the proportions don't feel completely off to me when you put this one on. It still wears like that 39 millimeter, although not as thin on the wrist as the Black Bay 58. A true GMT movement on the inside, the MT5652. So this is the same movement that was in uh, the Black Bay uh, 41, the GMT. So seeing that transition over here and still fitting within the 39 millimeter case is encouraging, although that is going to be the reason for the elevated uh, height of the case itself. Now we have our complication out of the way. Let's go for something more everyday or casual style watch. It's just kind of that Swiss army knife and can do somewhat of it all. That I have Hamilton with the khaki field, but this one being the titanium version. So I think the one that's gonna give you the most spread is going to be that black dial version uh, from this titanium collection. We did see recently the kind of collaboration, which was a unique collaboration between Hamilton and a video game Far Cry. That's where we saw this titanium uh, configuration of the khaki field. Now this is becoming more standardized production. You have a variety of different choices to choose from now when it comes to uh, dial colors. But these are probably some of the more attainable titanium field-oriented watches on the market. This in the Formex field, probably being the two definitive ones. But if you like the 80-hour power reserve that comes with the Hamilton khaki field, I think that's going to allow it to get the edge. 100 meters of water resistance, 38 millimeter case. These actually wear, it feels like on the wrist, smaller than the traditional khaki field models just because the lighter weight of titanium. When you have this on like a NATO strap, for example, this thing is like a feather on the wrist. They are so light uh, and it's really nice to have this one on. It's like almost you forget it's on uh, during different parts of the day. Thickness under 12 millimeters, sapphire crystal. The one thing I will say about the sapphire crystal, the coating, like always with Hamilton, sometimes not the best. The reflections can be not the most flattering at certain angles. So I did save some money with that titanium choice. So now I can extend out my budget for my dress watch. And here I have Frederic Constant with the classic moon phase manufacturer. So this is a 2019 release and why they call it a manufacturer moon phase is because it has a manufacturer movement on the inside, the FC712. 50 meters of water resistance, a 42 millimeter case, but this does not wear near 42 millimeters. I'd say closer to a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case, all things considered, and a price tag under $3,000 leaving me still a little bit of money left over. And then to round out, I have our diver slash beater category. I know this is around a thousand dollar watch, so maybe saying a beater isn't the right thing, but it's taking up a smaller portion of our budget. And I think it could really cross off both of these options. And for that, I have the new Seiko dive watch with the SPB 313. So if you haven't seen these yet, these are, if you take the Willard and then you had the SPB 143, if those two watches had a child, this is what probably would come out. So 41 millimeter case, 46.9 millimeter lug to lug. So this is gonna wear like a 39 and a half to 40 millimeter case. So for the small wristed individuals out there, this one is probably gonna be for you. Automatic Seiko 6R35 movement on the inside with that extended power reserve of 70 hours. Sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance. These are sick watches. I really was excited when Seiko unveiled these and a nice combination between that Willard and that SPB 143 and that family of Prospects divers. For our third persona here, we have the Hipster. So the Hipster has to go for something that's a little bit more under the radar, a brand that not everybody knows. So I have three of them here. To start off, I wanna look at a chronograph. And for this, I have Nevada Grenchen. So this is a brand that was actually uh, revived by a, a watch collector and a watch enthusiast who also had a lot of time in the industry working at the likes of Zenith as well as JLC and really breathing in, I think, good life into 
a brand that had its own history uh, and doing it in a cool way. And also knowing what enthusiasts want. And by that, you'll kind of just see some of the specifications and dimensions and how this watch wears and why I say that. So the watch here is the Chronomaster Aviator C Diver. So this is kind of a hybridized sporty, uh, but also classic looking chronograph watch. 38 millimeter case size in diameter. That's, I think, wonderful to see with a manual SW510 and then also thickness that's pretty reasonable, 13.75, not the thinnest out there, uh, but these dimensions of 38 millimeters by 46.5 millimeter lug to lug with uh, give all in all a decent thickness, I think makes this one pretty interesting to look at. 100 meters of water resistance to be in alignment with that sea diver name and sapphire crystal on top. For the dive watch in the hipster category, I have a watch that not many people talk about, but I was actually impressed when I was able to handle one of these in person. And that is from a brand called Titoni with the C Scoper. So personally, not my favorite name for a dive watch, but this watch, when you get it in hands, is impressive, at least from a finishing perspective. It is a bigger boy at 42 millimeters and a 14.5 millimeter thickness with a lug to lug of 51 millimeters. But to go along with that, you're getting 600 meters of water resistance, so well built. The bezel action on this is honestly among the best that I have come across from not only a micro brand, independent brands in the price category, but also probably any dive watch under $2,000. I was almost taken back by how this one felt in the hands. Also on the inside, you have an automatic to Tony T10 movement. Now this is what they classify as an in-house movement. I don't know the full story here, but this is getting a 72 hour power reserve. The bridge architecture is more uh, custom and unconventional compared to your off the shelf movement and also being COSC certified. And this is coming with a watch that's under $2,000. So all in all, I I think this is a pretty slept on watch, might be a little bit large for some people out there, uh, but a cool under the radar pick. And then for our watch that has more of a dress focus, we have Louis Erard with their Regulator Aventurine. So this is one of their stone dial watches uh, with the regulator format. I like this for a couple of reasons. One, when you're talking about regulators on the market, many brands just neglect it. There really aren't any options of regulator watches under $5,000. There's some that will do it at the more expensive price ranges and in the high horology tier, of course, uh, but this is probably one of the cooler offerings from the more attainable perspective. So you take that idea and then you add on top this spectacular looking aventurine dial. I think this is a wonderful combination if you want something that's unique. Uh, this was one of the Louis Erard models that when I saw this in person for the first time, I was like, okay, this is this is something, this is cool. I think for the likes of Alanga Saxonia Venturine to something like this, I think when it's done well, it's just simply beautiful. And this is a good example of that. 42 millimeter case, it's going to wear closer to a 41 millimeter when you actually have it on wrist. 12.3 millimeters uh, for the thickness here, 50 meters water resistance and an automatic Sleda SW266 on the inside. So I did have a bit more money left over with those three watches. So let's throw in an everyday style watch here and go in with the Aquascaf Titanium from Baltic. This is a newer watch from Baltic coming in with the conventional type of approach with their Aquascaf DNA and then expanding it out from the case size at 42 millimeters, 47.5 millimeter lug to lug. So this will wear still around a 40 and a half millimeter case, 300 meters of water resistance. And then inside we have an automatic Miyota nine series movement. So four Hertz here rather than the three Hertz with the eight series movements and all coming in with a price of $800. For Persona 4, we have the sports watch or nothing. So I'm looking at a collection that's going to be made up of basically three different subgenres of sports watches. Look at a diver, then we'll move into a integrated style watch with that integrated steel sports design, and then we'll round it out with a GMT watch. To start with our dive watch, we have the Omega Seamaster 300. Uh, this is a watch that I, for all the Seamaster models, I think is my personal favorite. I like how it has an allegiance to the original 1957 variant. It's a bit more refined in its approach uh, in regards to its polish links and then some hits of polishing throughout the case. I also just love the wear on the wrist. It is a 41 millimeter case, but it wears like a true 40 in actuality. The facetings of the side of the case make it wear pretty compact all in all. And then now are getting a blue dial variant. Previously with the old second hand and setup, I was only available in titanium with that blue dial. So I love this configuration. I think it just looks the part. Also a 8900 series Omega coaxial caliber on the inside, master chronometer certified. And I loved how this one has a no date. And then you're also incorporating that second position isolated hour function. 
Uh, that's just an awesome combination for me when you don't have to worry about quick setting a date. I love the on the fly adjustment of that isolated hour. I think that's a sleeper type of combination that some people don't talk about when they're able to wear this watch on the wrist and they're able to maybe you know travel with this watch. It's a breeze. Next, we have the Maurice Lacroix Icon for our integrated watch. So I needed something around $2,000 that was also going to be uh, of this integrated style. And I think the uh, Maurice Lacroix Icon is probably one of the best offerings here. Now, whether or not you wanna go for the conventional 41 millimeter option, so I think it's up to the wearer on what is going to be the right case for them. I'd say the 39 millimeter option probably will be in alignment with maybe what somebody that would also go for the Omega Seamaster 300 would go for. Uh, it's going to wear pretty true to that size. If that's slightly smaller on the wrist, Finishing of the bracelet is simply phenomenal. I think for $2,000, this watch from the case perspective almost punches above its weight. It's among some of the best that I've come across. Uh, of course, the design is maybe flying a bit too close to the sun and maybe a bit too close to the AP Royal Oak in many ways, but if you do like that style and design, you have $2,000 to spend, uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a watch that does a better job uh, than the Mauricio Kwa Icon for the money. And to round us out here, we have a GMT. And 2022 has been the year of the GMT watch. Look at the likes of the Longjean Zulu Time, the Black Bay Pro, the Lefty from Rolex, Bolova with the Wilton, which now is pretty much the most attainable GMT watch on the market for true GMT movement. And then you have the Ocean Star GMT with a new variation. And that's not even including the watch that we actually have here. And that is with the Seiko GMT, these new Seiko 5 Sports GMTs coming in a price range $500 for a mechanical GMT watch. Combining the Seiko 5 Sports design and infusing a GMT watch, bicolor bezels, this is just a winner. This is a home run on another scale for Seiko. Uh, these are gonna sell like hotcakes and for good reason. I think I might even have to pick one of these up myself for my personal collection because I just think they're simply that cool. For Persona 5, we have the perfect duo. So the whole idea here is to have one watch that's a perfect uh, combination with the other to pretty much have us covered in every scenario. So something that's more sports oriented, the other that's going to be more dress oriented or refined. To start us off with our sports category, I want to have maximize flexibility here. So I have the Longjean Zulu Time. This is a watch that, like I mentioned previously when talking about the year of the GMT, is one of those watches that springs to mind quickly. A 42 millimeter case, 13.9 millimeter thickness with a lug to lug of 49.3 millimeters. Whereas like a 41 to 41 and a half millimeters, uh, I think the lug to lug is still a little bit broad, but much better than the first run of those Spirit models that simply just had a lug to lug distance that was so off with the proportions compared to the case size. 100 meters of water resistance, but the big thing here is a true GMT movement on the inside. This is the ETA. 31.L411 with a sapphire crystal, pretty good bezel action, uh, three different uh, dial colors and bezel variations to choose from. You have the green bezel version, the blue, as well as a black on black. And if you get it on the bracelet, it comes in at $3,000, just a little bit more than that, $3,050. And that would be probably my choice because the bracelet is well done, especially that on the fly adjustment within the clasp. And we are gonna have a little bit of money left on the table when I combine my other choice here, and that is with the Grand Seiko SBGA 375. So this is a newer 2021 release, one of a wide collection of spring drive models from Grand Seiko following the lineage of the SBGA 211. This isn't a traditional dress watch by any means. I think it's more of that everyday kind of walking the line with 100 meters of water resistance and having that spring drive movement, the 9R65, seen in many of Grand Seiko's watches that's starting at this price range. Although this watch doesn't have that texturized dial surface that some other Grand Seikos are going to have. I do like the blue dial. It has this wonderful, rich navy type of hue to it uh, that I think will make it remarkably versatile uh, for a collection that's only gonna be made up of two. And for our final persona, we have the three watch collection. So three watches, starting with our first bucket here, we're gonna go for the diver category with the Zodiac Super Seawolf. Variety to choose from here when it comes to what Zodiac Seawolf you wanna go for, but I'm gonna go for more of the conventional Seawolf. Uh, this one's following that original 1953 design. And I think many people overlook the idea that the Zodiac Seawolf has history back to 1953, the same year 
Rolex Submariner was released as well as the Bon Bon 50 Fathoms, although maybe not getting as much love. 39 millimeter case in this instance, 48.7 millimeter lug to lug. So it wears closer to a 40 in actuality, thickness 13.7 millimeters, water resistance of 200 meters and an automatic STP 111 on the inside. That's gonna be Fossil's third party Swiss a movement provider that they utilize in many instances within the Zodiac uh, family. For our everyday category in this three watch collection, we have IWC with the Mark 18. You could also mention the Spitfire here, but something going into that pilot watch DNA from IWC, also coming in around that $5,000 price point. Uh, when you look at the Mark 18, you have a variety of different options to choose from, silver dials, blue dials, black dials, pretty much anything is available under the sun. But to keep things simple, I would probably go for the black dial variant if you're trying to stay in alignment with a heritage of uh, this model family, a 40 millimeter case, thickness of 11 millimeters, lug to lug of 50 millimeters, and a water resistance of 60 meters. So it should have you covered in a variety of different scenarios. You do have a Salida base movement on the inside, but all in all, you can't really beat IWC's history when it comes to developing pilot and aviation oriented watches. They were one of the trailblazers in that arena and continue to keep that moving along quite well, even in the 21st century. And then for our third watch here, I'm gonna be looking at a dress watch from Germany. Now, when I say a German dress watch, maybe you're thinking of Junghans, maybe you're thinking of something like Nomos, but instead, I would actually look at Zinn. Zinn, yes, they make dress watches, believe it or not. And here I have the 1739 AGB. So this is uh, a dress watch that's gonna follow a minimalist, more utilitarian form factor, as well as approach with its dial design, having simple linear markings for the hours, uh, but also very much Zinn and I think rather elegant and also one that I would say is incredibly overlooked. I just wanted to be a bit different here. 39 millimeter case, thickness of 9.1 millimeters in a lug to lug of 45 millimeters. So going to wear pretty true, if not smaller to a 38 millimeter case size, 100 meters of water resistance, because what is a Zinn watch if it doesn't have at least 100 meters of water resistance, even for a dress watch and an automatic SW300 going to have a top grade movement on the inside, fine tune and regulated by Zen and typically going to be running like a top once you get it on the wrist. But all right guys, that is my video looking at how you can build a $9,000 wash collection, six different personas, but how would you build a $9,000 wash collection? Which of these personas did you like the most and you identify the most with? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, we're gonna probably continue going up in this series, but if you do give it a thumbs up, that's just more of an indication how quickly you guys want us to continue this uh, and maybe look at $10,000. It's a big number and a big category next. Also definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also subscribe to our email newsletter, get written content sent to your inbox every single week. That written content completely different than the content that we're creating here. So great place to get guides, deep inside history, comprehensive guides on different model families and everything you need to know. Certainly would recommend it. And also be sure to add me to your contact list on your email to ensure that those emails are sent to you every single week. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.